Hey everybody, this is Forbidding Angel. Right now, we're going to go over giving orders. Uh, this includes issuing orders to units and issuing orders to buildings. Now, in, uh, for the most part, left click is used to select things. So, for example, you know, if I left click on these buildings, I select them. Also, left click and dragging a box selects things in that box. Now, the right mouse button is generally used to uh, tell something to do its default action. So, the default action for mobile army units is to move. So, if I right click somewhere, it tells them to move there. Alright. So, essentially, uh, left click, select, right click, perform an action. And for the most part. Now, let's go over queuing orders. Okay. Queuing orders is really easy. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things you can do it, but for the very basis, if I want to queue orders for a unit, all I have to do is press and hold shift while I'm issuing the orders. So, as you can see, then the order just the unit just follows my orders. Now, let's say you're building something. You can queue up things by pressing shift. Uh, yeah. And so basically, that way your current construction is not bothered. And uh, you could even do things like, say, build that and then come over there. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Now, we're going to cover this probably in more depth a little bit later, but there's the repeat order. Now, basically, what the repeat order does is it says, okay, whatever order I have, or whatever queue of orders I have, I'm going to do that until I die. So, for example, if I say, hey, here, wait, 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 actually, let's do this. We'll return, we'll turn repeat on, so press Q or click the button. Okay, so we're going to tell this unit to go in a circle and then build a few basic generators, okay? And basic generator. Okay, so this unit will keep repeating these orders until it dies. Now, one thing you might not be noticing so much is the fact that it's trying to repeat these orders over and over. See, it'll try to build these over and over again, but it can't because they already exist and the position's blocked and everything. So, for example, see, he stops. He's trying to do all this stuff and then he realizes he can't. So, Let's say we have this builder on repeat and we told him to do all that. And what if one of the buildings gets killed? Okay. Oh, hey! He goes and rebuilds it. Let's kill all of them. Okay. See, all these are starting to be rebuilt. So, in this way, you can actually have a dedicated builder building things like on your front lines or building your base or, you know, things like that. And you can just put them on repeat and forget about them. And know that if anything gets destroyed, he's going to go back and rebuild it. So, um... Now... I'm going to read from the wiki here for a little bit, um, and basically, I've kind of deviated from the wiki a little bit, but I wanted to show that where it was really relevant, but, okay. When you hold down shift while giving a unit an order, it adds that order to its queue. Queuing orders means you can tell a unit or a group of units to do multiple tasks, and they will go off and do them in the order that they were given without any more input from you. 
For example, if you want a construction vehicle to build a line of defenses around your base, you can select the structure you want, hold shift, and click where you want them a few times, like I did with the generators, and the construction vehicle will go ahead and do it, and you don't have to think about anything. Now, uh, if you have a unit selected, holding shift will show the unit's order queue. So, for example, we have this. Now, this is shown anyway, but if we press shift, then we also see the little squares where it's told to build, build things. By default, it'll show move orders and attack orders and stuff like that. But building orders, they get shown if you hold shift. Um, now, for example, if you have, let's turn repeat off, if you have a queue set up, and let's say you're building a bunch of these and you're like, oh crap, I didn't want that one. Well, you can just click right where you clicked it before and it removes it. Okay? So that's really easy. Uh, let's see. Um, and also, okay, another thing that you can do is let's say that you have one of these guys, an orb. Now an orb is, it has a lot of functions, but one of its primary functions is just to help out. So generally by default an orb will help out if it happens to be in range, but it's sometimes helpful to give them a patrol order throughout your base. And basically that means that anywhere an orb can help out, it will. So. Uh, the same thing for uh, constructors and stuff like that. Now, patrol orders on units will cause them to go ahead and chase down enemy units that they see and various other things, but we'll get to that a bit later. Um, okay. So, let's go to the basics of building buildings. So, we start out with this guy, which is our overseer. All right. When we have him selected, we have a big list of stuff or whatnot. On the top, these are mainly orders, as we can see. And then we've got these abilities, which we'll get into that in a little bit. And then we actually have structures and an actual mobile unit. So all you do, you select your guy, and you can click on the picture of whatever you want, and it'll appear like this. Now, when you're trying to place it, Yellow means that the building is not going to be obstructed. Or, let me rephrase that. Yellow means that the building is obstructed. But, it's resolvable. In other words, the unit can uh, resolve the issue on its own. Like, for example, you see here, there's a bunch of yellow spots where these units are. Basically, that means those units are going to have to move before that can be built. Okay, I canceled that, <laughs> just so you know. Um, okay, red means that it is not possible for that to be built there, and I can click on it as much as I want. Can't do it. Um, now, let's say uh, we need to rotate these. So for your factory, sometimes, generally your factories are going to be orientated towards the center of the map, but it's not always perfect. So, if we want to rotate it, we use the bracket keys, which are these guys right here. And we can switch them around. And it'll, sh it'll tell in the log what the orientation is. And it sets the orientations for all future buildings as well. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Now, let's say that we want to build lines. Sometimes people ask me, oh, you can build lines of stuff? Absolutely. So, for example, let's select all these guys. Oops. Okay. Let's say we need supply very badly, as we're about to. Yeah, right now we need supply pretty bad. Okay, so I want a bunch of supply buildings. The last thing I want to have to do is do this, because that sucks also makes for a really messy base. So, what we can do, we can select one from the menu, press shift, click and drag with our left mouse button, draw a line. And it makes a line. But, oh, it gets better. 
Let's say we want a brick. Let's say we want a whole bunch. Because one line, that'll only get us that many or whatever. Uh, let's say we want a brick like that. Okay. We get that by pressing Shift and Alt at the same time. Let go, and a brick is queued up. Now, let's say uh, we're kind of worried about a structure and, <laughs> and we want to build some stuff around it. So, in this case, let's go wild and build a bunch of turrets around a uh, advanced generator. Pretty much all we do for that... Now, of course, you'd want to use you know something other than turrets. Let's, let's say we could use mines for it. And we can even we can even get fancy with how we do these. Uh, but for the moment, basically we just press Control and Shift, and that surrounds whatever we have selected with units that we were trying to build. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, did I do... Oh, yeah. Shift... <laughs> Shift Control Alt builds a perimeter. So we'll use mines again. So Shift Control R Alt. And that works like that. Now, you can see what I'm doing here. See how I'm spacing these out? You do that by... When you are when you have Shift and in whatever combinations of queuing that you have uh, set up, you press either Z which spreads them out, or X, which makes them smaller. It also works with mouse button 4 and 5. So if you have a mouse with 5 buttons, you can do this automatically just from the mouse. Okay. Alright. And <laughs> those guys are still building those. That's great. Okay, so. Um, let's see. Uh, building mobile units. Okay, so now we kind of went over this already a little bit, but let's touch on it again. Okay. So when we're building... When we're building units, now we may want them to do any number of complicated actions. Like, for example, okay, let's say I want these units to uh, patrol the map. But I want to. I want them to be super aggressive and fight everything they come across. Well, what I can do is I can issue a fight command and I can queue them up all over the map, and so they'll go and attack anything that they come across because those orders are transferred to the units that uh, that are built from the factory. Okay. There you go. So all these units have the same command that the factory had. Now, what you can do with your factory, let's say that you want to have a select grouping of units. Now, for example, when I'm when I'm using the hover factory in a game, I have a very strict queue that I use. Uh, because I want a proper army mix. And that is, I do five kites, two spas, five crushers, and six droplets, and two shadow furies. And this gives me a nice mix of units. And so basically, if I put, if I just queue up those units, then the factory goes through the queue, and then it stops. Well, that sucks. I want them to, uh, I want them to do all of them. You know, I want it to just keep on going for all time. So, what we can do with that is remember the repeat order that we, remember the repeat order that we had used earlier? Well, we can use it on factories, too. So, for example, if I turn repeat on, I do five kites, two spas, five crusher, six droplets, and two shadow furies. So now, no matter what happens, 
this factory will just keep on pumping them out. See, the numbers never actually change. And it just keeps pumping them out over and over. And that's the best way to use your factories. Because it will basically make sure that your front lines keep getting replenished. Now let's say I'm running out of resources and I want this factory to stop building. Well, I can select it and tell it to wait. So what the wait command does is it effectively puts a unit on pause. You can see it by the little hourglass thing that pops up when it's, when it's on wait. If I press W again or click on wait, then it starts up building again. This can be especially useful for, let's say, you're building something like this. But you're like, oh crap! Whoops, <laughs> I was too slow. Let's try that again. Oh crap, I'm out of resources. And I want to tell it to wait. Well, I can tell that I can pause this unit in its track. See, it still has the move order. And I can assign a bunch of other orders, too. But it won't do anything until I take it off of wait. So, for example, let's say I want to coordinate an assault, all right? I want these guys to go up here, fly around here, fly around here a little bit, and everybody meet down here in the center. So, what I can do, if I want this all to happen simultaneously, I can select these units, can hit W, give them their orders. Notice they're not doing anything, okay? I want these guys to come here, and with these guys, whoops, I'll put them on wait, and I want them to go here, 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 and end up right here, okay? So now, when I want this to be done all simultaneously, I just click on the wait button or press W again, and everything starts taking off and doing it, like I said, Wait is basically a pause button. So, with that in mind, um, let's see. The other things that we can do... <laughs> apparently Midnight, Midnight's found the other overseer. But okay, let's go over cloaking. Because cloaking is pretty important if you're using all terrains. So let's build us an all terrain factory. And I'm going to go ahead and sell these guys. Okay. So, let's say we have a bunch of units and we want to be able to cloak them quickly. Okay, we can do that by pressing K, or we can click on the cloak button. But K's a lot faster. Now, the reason that this is important with all terrains, the way that all terrains work is they need the first shot. They're beefy, but they're slow. They have good range, but once again, they're slow. So, in order to win fights against similar matchups, like, for example, let's say Crushers uh, on the hover side, or... Uh, you know, anything that they happen to be nearly matched with on range. What you want to do is you want to cloak them right before the battle starts. So, let's say I have a line of crushers right here. So, let's see. Um, okay, so there are 10 crushers right there. We'll see them in a second. Okay, so if I just blindly run these into 10 crushers, uh, I'm going to get hurt. I'm still going to win because I have a number advantage. Well, I probably will win. Let's find out. Pretty sure I'll win. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'll win. Well, I don't know. It's going to be close. Nope. Okay, so I survive with five units, all right? So now... As an example, let's build the same number of units, pretty much to my recollection. I didn't really pay that much attention, but 
for the purposes of example. Okay, so now while these finish building, let's go over how much it costs to cloak things. Also, your factory can cloak too. That's pretty cool. But how much does it cost to cloak things? Okay, well, basically, if the unit is standing still, the cloak cost is zero. If it's moving, the cloak cost is one. So right here, I have 15 units selected. If I cloak them all, it doesn't cost anything if they're just sitting there. However, if they start moving, look at the energy requirements. Goes up a bit. Now that's not an exact number, so, you know. But, uh, much of it's an estimation. Anyway, okay, so the reason cloak is important with all terrains. If you're about to go into battle, you want to cloak your units right before they get in range of the enemy because that uh, will cause my all terrains to get the first shot. Now here's another important thing. We have units that go different speeds, right? Well, what if we want them all to reach the enemy in, you know, in a solid line? Well, we can do that. What we do is when we're giving this any move order, we press and hold control while we give the move order. So I'll actually use the wait command here because I want to demonstrate putting these units uh, in a straight line uh, using control. So I'm going to go ahead and give a move, move order here. All right. I use shift and control for that because shift because I wanted to queue it up. Because if I just give an order, it'll override the wait command. So when you're using weight you want to use shift so you can queue it up so I'll put them on weight I'm gonna press shift so I can queue it up and then control so I can tell them to all move at the speed of the slowest unit in this grouping which is gonna be this guy right here so let's go ahead and I'll show you how uh, typically you would cloak them because basically when they start firing they'll uncloak the reason that we use the cloak in this way is so that we get the first shot. That's so important because it can a lot of times be the difference between winning and losing a fight. So, okay, let's say we know they're right there. Okay, let's go ahead and cloak them up. Yep, see our guys get the first shot. See how much better we did with that? We have nine units left over now. Before it was five. So yeah, that's just one of the reasons that cloaking is really important. But uh, cloak can be toggled with K, so it's really easy to use. Just when you have them selected, just randomly press K. Now you can always use the order menus here, but most of everything that you need here is going to be on a hotkey. Um, all right. So, let's go over the fire states. Uh, basically, they're self-explanatory for the most part. We have fire at will, hold file, fire, and return fire. Now, for example, if you have units that can cloak, like all terrains, you might want to put them on hold fire. You might want to put them on hold fire, so that that way they don't automatically shoot when they see an enemy unit. So we've got these guys cloaked and we can actually see what's up. Now be careful, they do have a small decloaking radius. And if you press shift, you'll see not only do you see their attack range in red, but you see the decloak range in blue. So if that decloak range gets within range of one of these guys, boom. Okay. But using this, we can actually scout out our opponent's base. Now, if he has radar, he'll see radar pings from us moving around. He won't know our exact location, but he'll have a reasonably good idea. Also, the dust poofs from when they walk. Your opponent can see that. Can't see the unit, but it can see the poofs. So he's got a re reasonably decent idea of where your unit is, but he may or may not be able to do anything about it. Okay. So, guarding. Okay. How does guarding work? Well, you might want to use guard for a variety of reasons. Let's say you have one 
large unit like that. Or actually, you know what? Let's make an Anarchid. Okay, if we have an Anarchid, it's big, stompy, it's slow. It might be useful to tell all the units, okay, guard him. And so basically, they'll just follow him around and they'll attack anything that attacks him. And they'll more or less try to keep him alive. And this guy's going to get killed probably pretty quickly. He has no business going in like that. At which point all these guys die because they didn't get the first shot and they weren't close. Ah, they'll live. Yeah, okay, they made it. Sort of. Alright, so with guarding, you can guard one unit in particular. Or you can guard a bunch of units by right-clicking and dragging. Just right-clicking on one unit will guard that particular unit. But you can guard a bunch of units in an area by clicking, right-clicking and dragging a circle. Okay? Now, um, I won't go over high trajectory because it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you happen to have a unit that you see high trajectory on, which I'll show you one, that's it's not in the game yet, but uh, it does have a high trajectory mode. Okay, this unit has a high trajectory mode. And basically what it means is it fires its weapon in high trajectory. Right now it's low trajectory. If I change it to high trajectory, it starts making it rain. Now you can imagine that if you have a bunch of these, that gets pretty crazy. Okay? It's not accurate. <laughs> not at all. But it can be pretty useful. Okay? So, move state. What do the move states mean? Okay, we have maneuver, which is default. We have roam, and we have hold position. Now, maneuver will, means that if an enemy unit comes in range, your guys are going to chase it. They're going to try to chase it and kill it. And they'll chase it for a little ways. If the other unit's too fast and goes out of range, well, then they'll go back to where they originally were. If they're on roam, they will chase it for a much farther distance. Or, if they're on hold position, they'll just hold their spot wherever they're at. Now, you can assign move state orders to the factory. So that any unit... So, let's say I put it on hold position. Any unit that gets built from this factory gets hold position. Okay. So, patrol we've already covered. Uh, and it does pretty much exactly what you would expect it to do. For example, I uh, can give these guys a patrol order. And so now they'll go back in between this weird set of orders I did. Now let's cover mo move orders really quickly, which we've been going over move orders. But there's multiple ways to do move orders. If you have a group of units selected and you just left click, they'll pretty much all clump up and do that. So the best way to move your units around is to use what we call line orders. And what that is is you right click on the map and you draw a line. And the units spread out within that line. Now you can make your own formations and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, but the one of the most important things is you can draw your own concaves. It doesn't have to be perfect. But basically you can surround and flank really easy using line orders. So basically Anytime you give a move order, it should probably be a line order. Unless it's an individual unit, in which case it just comes out like that and gives a bunch of orders, which makes the unit kind of be like, oh, okay, this doesn't make sense, but all right. <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's see. We covered repeat. Let's cover selling real quick. Now, if we want to sell units... Let's say we want to free up some supply, or this unit's almost dead. Let's get rid of them and make something better. Now, when we sell a unit, we get 50% of its price back. The longer that unit took to build, the longer it's going to take to sell. So, if you're trying to sell a nuclear silo, it's going to take a while to sell. Same for if you try to sell an advanced generator. It's going to take a little while to sell. But you'll get 50% of the price. So, these are 170 so you'll get half of that back in metal. Self-destruct, 
is basically a way to get rid of them quickly. So you can just press Control D for that. I'm sorry, I didn't mention um, for selling. It's Shift S, or you can, of course, click the button on the menu. And the units get that to stop it. Give it a stop order. Pressing sell again won't do anything. That's important. So just make sure that you issue a stop order if you want to stop the sell. Okay? Now, the stop order is pretty obvious. Basically, if you have a unit with a bunch of orders or it's doing something, you can press stop, and it just cancels all that unit's orders in the queue. And that basically covers everything. Just about. That covers pretty much everything that uh, we'll need to know as far as moving units around and giving orders. Sorry, this video was uh, pretty long. But um, it really kind of illustrates how orders can move. And you can do all kinds of really, really cool, complicated things with your orders. So, good killing.